here we are. Here we are live. Welcome to the world of Hearthron. I'm your host, storyteller, and dungeon master, Bilbo. Come join us as we travel through the tales from the Yawning Portal. This is our first episode of the Forge of Fury. As we just finished the Sunless Citadel last week, the plan is to play the same characters through each of these adventures in the Yawning Portal, level up the characters accordingly, and finish with the Tomb of Horrors. So come join us as we adventure through these old school dungeon crawls. Uh, tonight we are missing a couple of players. We are missing L, who is up in uh, northern Minnesota, uh, doing whatever they do up north. And, uh, and Valian, who is slaving away at some Burger King out in Seattle. Uh, so those two couldn't make it. And then also, uh, we cannot fit, forget Thorn. He is on his way back from Baldwin, Minnesota right now. So they are coming back. However, we have a new player joining us here. Cat uh, is joining our, our lovely uh, group of adventures here through these uh, Tales of the Awning Portal. So let me uh, set the scene and we will get uh, Cat's character uh, involved in the game fairly quickly as well. So... Our heroes have gathered back together at the Sunless Citadel. After two weeks of traveling to the village of Oakhurst and the port city Baker's View. They returned Sharwin and Sir Bradford to Oakhurst and learned the fate of the ranger Carcass and Sharwin's uh, brother Talgan. Valian and Dar investigated the limited details that Valian discovered about Glitterhane, Kundrakar, Durgan the Black, and met Torlum while in Baker's view. They learned that Glitterhelm is another dwarven name for Kundrakar. 200 years ago, Kundrakar was a secret dwarven fortress which would which laid on a hill called Sand to or sorry Stone Tooth. These dwarves led by Durgan the Black and were well known for making magical weapons. About a hundred years ago, an orc warband captured some of these dwarves from Kundrakar and it is believed they were tortured to give up the secret location of Glitterham. An orc warlord attacked the fortress with a mighty army, killing all the dwarves and looting Glitterham of all of its magical weapons and booty. Since the Great War, orcs, goblins, and other bloodthirsty monsters have fought over ownership of this fortress. As Valian uh, decided to speak to Durnin at the Yawning Portal about Krundrakar, uh, he found out rather quickly that the group actually met Torla, a friend of Durnin's. And this was before the group went to the Sunless Citadel. And they just, uh, even though they just met him ever so briefly. So Torlum would like to hire the group to enter Krundrakar, map it out, and he will pay the group 1,000 gold pieces for mapping out the fortress. He also shows Valian and Dar the hilt of a sword he owns with a red gem uh, with dwarven ruins of letters DB inscribed in the gem. Torlum states he will pay the group uh, for recovery of these four, four weapons that Dur Durgan made for him. Each of these items have the same marking on them as well, uh, Torlum states. He will pay 1,000 gold pieces for the magical longsword, 6,000 gold pieces for a magical great axe, 500 gold pieces for a hand axe, and 500 gold pieces for a warhammer. Torlum also states the group could get hired by the constable of the mining town of Blazingdale, which is about 30 miles away from uh, Stone Tooth. Torlum says, check, with, check in with the constable, Dara Whitewood, 
when the party arrives to the town to see if the town will hire the group to rid the area of orcs. Constable Dara also might be able to give directions on how to find this secret fortress, as the road that led to this fort fortress is all but washed away. So, we have all the our uh, characters, uh, except for Cat um, yet, uh, that are back at the Sunless Citadel after two weeks of uh, traveling between Oakhurst and Baker's View. Uh, Erebus, of course, stayed behind here at the Sunless Citadel, uh, searching it out a little bit more and hunting in the evenings with uh, Calcrix. And, uh, and so you guys are all back together. Valiant, of course, um, explained this before you guys all left back to Erebus, but figured you guys would all get together to make the decision on what to uh, do next if you're going to take this uh, job. Uh, Valiant said uh, to Torlem that they would accept it, um, but just wanted to double check with the group too. You didn't want to speak for everybody. So, Dar, what do you think on this? What do you, uh, what do you, what do you think uh, on this mission here for the dwarves? <laughs> well, of course we have to go do it. It's for the dwarves. Well, really? I'm not so sure. I'm a dwarf. What do you expect me to say? Of course we're going to go there. Of course we're going to see search it out. Of course we're going to find all these things. What? We found you in a dirt pile field. <laughs> Okay, and myself, go we're just going to follow you just right now? Because yeah, they're dwarves? Me. I think maybe because there's 9,000 gold pieces that that's what we're going to do it for. No, it's for the dwarves. Really? It's, no. it's over 9,000. It's 12,000. 12, I knew it would be complete agreement with going and talking to Erebus and Valiant and getting the information out of them. Of course, we're going to go working for city guard or some sort of Let's get the extra gold from them. They're not worth so we'll just get it from them. But yes, we should go do this right now. I say we leave right this instant. Oh, wait, is that ale? <laughs> <laughs> so, Erebus, have you, uh, have you let, um, uh, have you, uh, jot, jot out? Jot out yet? Uh, if uh, if L came back with the brazier, yeah, then we'll do the ritual and then he'll be free to go around. Okay. So if she, if she came back sooner, which is what I had asked her to do, but of course I don't know what Dan told, told you. So. Uh yeah yeah, so L L came back, so L's been back here, you know, a couple okay. of days yeah, before Yeah, he's, uh, he's out and about then for sure. Okay, so. What's a brazier? Um, it's a uh, metal con basically like a metal burning. Um, an incense thing where you can burn incense in. So, uh, you know when at uh, when you're at church, yeah. right? And they walk around with the thing with the smoke in yeah. it. That's a brazier. But why did they get it for? Um, to do a, a certain ritual that Erebus needed to do. To get rid. Um, to get Jot to agree. He's trying to put yeah. the outhouse so they can smell better when he got out there. All right. All right. So. So yeah, right now Jot will be invisible, right now. Okay, since perfect. The group yeah, I back. expect. Yeah. All right. Um. So you guys get back uh, actually later in the day. Um. And so Erebus and Calcrix, uh, your normal ritual is to go uh, hunting in the evening. Do you uh plan to do that? Are they back or no? Yeah, they're back. So this is in the sense they're all back, but it's evening. Uh, you guys are yeah. discussing about whether to go or not, but uh, it's gotten late too. Do you guys just stay above the surface at night, or are you guys going to all climb back down into the citadel? And, I would invite them down. And Lucky, well, is, Lucky has been up above with the wagon. <laughs> so you guys do have a wagon now, and Lucky... 
Lucky has stayed with the goat. I was planning on going hunting. Even though. So. Zaski wants to go, go with us? Yeah. Zaski has to go hunting with you. Uh, I don't know about I'm that. silent. <laughs> Alright. Alright. Alright, come, come with if you want. Okay. Weird monks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alright, so, uh, uh, you guys, uh, go on out, uh, that evening. And, uh, Kat, I would like you to make a. Uh, perception check. So that's a D20, and then it's uh, if you have perception skill, or it's just your uh, uh, is it wisdom, guys? Yeah, With wisdom. Wisdom yeah. bonus. Nine. 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 Seven. Okay, perfect. Do <laughs> <laughs> you make arts? So, uh, So, uh, uh, Calcrix, uh, will, uh, uh, fly back to Erebus and, and, uh, Sasku and says that, uh, he, he found someone, he found someone in the woods, probably about 400, uh, feet north of us. And, uh, since you told me I can't eat civilized people or attack civilized people, I, I I decided not to, um, but be warned. She's she's one of the those dra those dragon walking two feet. They think they're dragons, but they're not. And 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 to make matters worse. She's one of those stupid black ones. Oh. <laughs> she says, she says, God, <laughs> you, like you, opera, you can, you you can tell that maybe Jot is wearing off a little bit on Cal Craig's <laughs> after, <laughs> after two weeks <laughs> of hearing uh, Jot's insults, <laughs> that he might be wearing off on him a little bit. All right, so, so Erebus will point to the left for Sasku. Okay. I'm going to go to the right. I'll point to myself and point to the right. And then I'll point to Calcris and point up above, and we'll come, we'll try to circle from uh, all sides. All right. So I'd like uh, Sasku and uh, Erebus both to go ahead and make uh, stealth stealth rolls. Oh, yeah. 25. Yep, no problem for you. 19. Ah, oh, perfect. All right. So both of you uh, are able to. Uh, 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 s sneak up uh, into uh, what looks like just a little uh, little encampment. Uh, Kat, why don't you go ahead and describe your character? What do they? Uh, what does Sasku and Erebus see? Actually, <laughs> she's just sitting there. Do her. 
<laughs> it wouldn't surprise well, are you me. Out there together right now? Yeah, those two went out there. They're out. It's at night here. They're both out. Um, oh my god. No, I, I can't find it. And, and, uh, well, oh no, right? no. So, what do you do, uh, uh, Sass? So, do like, describe what, like, what's the area she's at? She's just in a, in just a small little, uh, you're in the hills. Huh. And so she's just off uh, with a small encampment, um, just sitting down. So is there a like, tent? No tent, no. Oh. How do I want to play this? So what do you well, do? we know what you're going to do. Just do it. <laughs> so what are you going to do? I'm going... So, so female black dragonborn, which you've never seen, by the way. Yeah. So. You, I played a black dragonborn paladin. Okay, but. you played one. Yeah. However, Sasuke's yeah. never seen this. I've never seen a black dragonborn. So I'm gonna be like, who are you? Like, you okay, hear, speak out of, up, speak up. Out of the bushes, you hear, who are you? What? She was taking a drink. Oh. I am Katara and Goldfish. Hmm. And the Druid. Hmm. And I'm going to just let see what Erebus does. No. Erebus is still hiding. You don't even see Erebus yourself. <laughs> oh, okay. That's, that's fine. Go ahead, Sasuke, it's all you What are you doing right here, out here? In the, in the trees, you hear, oh, this is such an interesting conversation, but you don't see it. Boy, this is just so Dude, exciting. Where is this coming from? Where is this it's coming from? It's come from the trees. <laughs> uh, uh, coming from a tree up above. I'll be like, who's up there? Because I, I know it ain't Krillix. So who's up there? <laughs> nope, it's not Krillix, dummy. I know, that's what I just said. <laughs> dumb, dumb. <laughs> Way it's far it's uh, quite a bit of ways. They went out hunting. Oh, so. Okay. <laughs> so. We're all wandering to the woods at night. And he's gonna well, like say, "Erebus, you gonna talk?" <laughs> you know he doesn't say much. Yeah. I'm wondering where he's at. This is kind of being creepy. <laughs> he's he's around. <laughs> I know. Maybe. Why don't you introduce yourself to her, yeah. you so, moron? Um, <laughs> this half elf monk, half elven monk, will step out from the bushes. He's like, I am Sasuke. He's he's not the leader of this group. Yeah, just the tough one. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 to be honest, I don't know who the leader of this group is either yet. Well, he's not really a leader, so. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> you don't say that. That's so now we, so now we have a white baby dragon, <laughs> and now a black dragon born with us. Hmm. Um, I don't like my odds of being eight. I I, I do not like this, Erebus. Why don't you show Hopefully yourself? Hopefully they don't get hungry. <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah, please don't don't eat me. I don't want to be eaten. All right, so uh, so uh, right by where you're uh, you're camping, uh, out of the out of a uh, out of just the blue, this uh red little uh, figure appears next to you uh, with uh, wings uh, and a tail. He's probably about a foot high 
and uh, probably about three feet in wingspan and about a foot long tail. And he goes, my name's Jot. Oh, you're, that's that creature. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you. Jot, Jot. I don't know coming over. J-O-T, if you can spell. Okay. Can you spell? Oh, no, not Josh. Jot. I've been, I've been cooped up in a cage for a couple weeks. So when I'm getting my legs around. He starts strutting around. Getting out here. Imagine this one foot tall little bat. Yep, just kind of just, yep, just walking around. Yep. It's <laughs> So, me lady, you're out just here in the middle of nowhere, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, that's good. We were out hunting with some dragon. <laughs> but he can't, he can't eat anybody, apparently. So, I guess that's the deal, hunting. They can hunt animals, not people. Or civilized I think Arabist uses the word civilized folk. So, humans, elves, dwarves. Arabist, I guess that also means dragonborn too, right? Don't worry, I'm not here to fight. <laughs> I leave that up to the Calcrix. Perfect. Well, if you want, you can head back to uh, where we're at. We're in this dreary hole in the ground that I just can't wait to get away from. I'm hoping now that uh, now that Erebus's uh, group is back, we can get out of this dump. Right, Erebus? He's somewhere out there. He doesn't talk much, so don't don't worry about it. <laughs> I, I, I've gotten like... Ten words out of them in two weeks. It's just horrible. <laughs> oh, well, I think this dwarf talks a lot. So <laughs> there's. We have one annoying dwarf in our group. Well, well, why don't you head back with uh, with me and Sasku here, and uh, we'll introduce you to the rest of our. Our, our group because I'm part of this group we're going adventuring I'm, I'm supposed to be holding air uh, hand right now but he's out hiding we're supposed to, well I guess we haven't really started adventuring yet right Erebus but we're supposed to be skipping down the road holding hands singing camp songs and the fire but uh, it quite hasn't happened yet I've been in the cage for two weeks finally out of this cage yeah, I know, right? Kept me in a cage. Thought I was gonna run away, well, fly away. But now, now I'm here to stay. So let's let's go back to the group. Come on, follow follow me. All right, all right. And I run faster than he flies. <laughs> all right, so. Uh, um, Jot will uh, uh, lead you back to the group since uh, Sasku decided to run, run yeah. on off ahead of everybody. Well, I was so. going at the same pace as her. All right, so we're together then. All right. And, and I'll trail behind and uh, clean up some of the trail. Okay, perfect. And then a dragon point. <laughs> Yeah, no, it doesn't seem like Cal Calcrick seems to go on off and hunt on his own after he wasn't he wasn't amused with this. So <laughs> be back later. All right, so so you guys uh, make it back to uh, uh, to the camp. Uh, Dar and Zazriel, Zazriel are there, um, and uh, you see. Uh, a, uh, a black dragonborn female along with this red the imp you've seen the imp so the imp but it's not in his cage anymore it's walking freely on the ground and uh, 
Walking or flying? Uh, he's walking, actually. Yep. So. <laughs> he seems to just like just strutting, you know, just walking. So, it's like just trying to get used to it. He moves his, he'll bounce up and down once in a while, fly a little bit, but he uh, he seems to be walking right now with the group. Nice. Hey. Look, look, look what we brought back. What are you guys doing? You guys brought another dragon into the group? Jesus. <laughs> you know, my chances of getting eaten are just becoming less and less. <laughs> I like it. What, what is your name, Miss Black Dragon? What was it? Guitar Golden. Guitar Golden. All right, cat. What are you? What are you doing? And in... it's Katara, not cat. Uh, Katara. Man, he's not. She's not too bright. Katara. <laughs> what are you doing out here in these woods? Well, these are hills, mind you. There's some trees here and there. Okay, shut this thing up before I kill it already. <laughs> Thank Aramis you. Erebus will come out of the dark. <laughs> hey. John, John, we better be careful here. We need to make friends with Azriel before we insult him. Wait, Dar, we, Dar, your name's Dar, your name's Dar, right? Dar? That, yep. So, Dar, I, I mean, don't, don't get upset that we all can't have our moms beat us with ugly sticks like you did. Together here, you hey ladies. What are we doing? Going after this fortress. To the dwarven citadel. After it's a fortress. Dum dum. So. So are, so are we leaving then in the morning or what? What's going on? Yeah, we're leaving in the morning. Or we can leave now, whenever. We'll leave in the morning. Erebus will, will ask John if, uh, if the Dragonborn can breathe fire. Did anybody get directions to this place? I don't know. Why don't you? Oh, I'll ask her. I'm sorry. I forgot. That's right. You don't like talking to everybody. It's okay. She won't bite, I don't think. You don't bite, do you? All right, good. So my 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 silent dark friend over here, uh, he wants to know if you if you breathe anything like like uh, Cal Craig's here. He breathes ice. I like breathe. I am a black dragon. We breathe acid. Ooh, I don't like that. I breathe. <laughs> that that would hurt. I'm not getting on your bad side either. Oh, that's that's good. I uh, I'll I'll stay clear of uh, of you and uh, mouth over there. I was already in his mouth once, and that wasn't fun. So I I tend not to talk to Calcrits, or at least not insult him. So hey, Dar, are you okay over there? You 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 look like you're in a lot of physical pain over there. Is that what uh, you're thinking? The expression that looks like. It's it's you. You're making my ears bleed. Oh, okay. All right. Anyway, so are we leaving tonight or tomorrow? Can I go have some beer, or do I have to wait? Um. In Abyssal, in Abyssal, he's gonna 
don't say to John. Uh, Val Valian will say uh, uh, that uh, what we need to do is, yeah, we need to go. Uh, it's north of, uh, it's a couple days north from uh, Baker's View. And there, go to this mining town called Blazingdale. And in Blazingdale, uh, that's where we can talk to this constable and also uh, uh, hopefully get uh, directions on how to get to this, uh, this uh, stone tooth hill. Ah, oh, good. What a fine young lad. So glad you're with us, my friend. You can take care of all of these administrative things. I'm going to go get some ale to take with us. And he goes to the bar, and I'm going to try and get a keg. We're, we're in the middle of nowhere. You're back at the Sunless Citadel, but you would have a keg of ale. You would have definitely... Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. He's got one of those leather mugs hanging from his side, and he'll take it over to the store. Um, to Jack. How many kegs of ale do you have to buy for a venture? Oh, I don't usually take it with me. I just wait. I, I, this, this is just a traveling mug. I'm just taking this till we get there. I don't usually bring ale when I go somewhere and go looking for things. I gotta be able to see. On the way there, I just gotta follow the person in front of me. But once I get there, I gotta be able to see. I don't drink when I'm on the job. Just when I'm off. Okay then. Alright. So to Jot, he's going to say in this in Abyssal, he's like, you're a cool creature, but you want to stay off these people's bad sides. Okay. So he, he oh, it's alright. So he comes up to you. And then uh, pees on your leg, and As then says, "I don't speak that oh. horrible language." Oh. <laughs> just backhand him. I just backhand. Okay, go ahead, make initiative. Just don't hit that sniper with your head. Um, eighteen total. All right, so go ahead, and make a swing at him. Yeah, I'm just gonna step in here. Uh, yeah, that's gonna miss. All right, so then uh, he turns invisible. And then you hear you hear off in the air. It would seem that you have no useful skills whatsoever or talents. I wasn't even aiming at you. <laughs> Couldn't even sword. hit me. I was standing right there. Couldn't even hit me. I was more worried about the pee on my leg. Ah, okay. All right. Sasuke, he speaks infernal. <laughs> oh. Oh. Well, I speak abyssal. That's a horrible language. That's this word. You're a horrible creature. <laughs> well, you better get used to me, Sasuke, because I'm here for the long haul. Right, Erebus? Well, until you die. Erebus, sh yeah, Erebus shook his head, yes. Okay? I'll just throw you in front of a fireball. Uh, nope, nope, nope. Let's not do that. Yeah, stay on my good side, dude. <laughs> All right. All right. So, uh, you guys then, I'll uh, bed down then, I guess, for the rest of the evening. Wake up in the morning and, uh, start heading, uh, back past Oakhurst, um, I believe you guys probably want to avoid it a little bit, as well as Baker's View, since you have a white dragon with you guys, yep. even though it's a baby white dragon. So, uh, uh, Kittera, uh, uh, so you notice, you see also in the group that they have this, uh, uh, they will come down probably later in the night um, and are at least in the morning when you wake up sleeping there, uh, in the encampment with the rest of the group is this small white dragon, uh, probably about three feet, uh, in body length with about a three foot tail or so, and probably has about a wingspan of about six feet. So 
uh, in your sense, yeah, you know it's uh, it is a baby dragon. It is not uh, not not that old, yeah. um, and uh, probably uh, from what you know of dragons, uh, probably very immature. So, <laughs> and that uh, and he'll wake when you guys all wake up in the morning. He'll head out if that's good for everybody. All right. They get a covered wagon. I assume, Bobo. Uh, yeah, we can say it is. I don't know. I, okay. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I think that's he did ask for that. That was the only yeah. one thing I know that L asked for was to get lucky, a way, yeah, a wagon, a covered wagon, and and that was it. Not no other gear. <laughs> so, <Okay. laughs> right. Well, he's chilling, so yeah. Uh, I great. Know. So I'm gonna try to I'll try to sleep in the wagon, and I, I'm assuming we'll put Calcrips in there as well. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I would say, uh, you know, we'd want to have Calcrix, uh in the wagon, and he, and he doesn't mind at all being in the wagon. He doesn't, since I can't attack any civilized people, I'll be in the wagon. So and. What did you say, Captain? Yeah, nope, not in a cage, nope. And then also, uh, Jot will, oh, of course, we, will be in the wagon. We will, uh, we'll, we'll drag up the cage with us, though. Okay, so you are taking the cage. Jot's gonna yeah, go, What? what's the plan for that cage? I'm not going back in. We have a deal, right? I don't have to yeah, go in there. It's not for you. It's not for you. Okay, all right. It's for the dragonborn girl. She won't fit. <laughs> <laughs> she, <laughs> she, she won't fit. Don't worry, you'll take offense to a lot of things from this group, trust me. Get used to it. There's been no disturbing. Yeah, you don't want to. You don't want to upset her. She breathes. She breathes acid. Acid. Yeah. Don't, we, we, don't worry, some some people just don't pay attention. <laughs> can you show us? Yeah, Arabis is kind of the curious folk. He always, he likes to know stuff and wants to show off tricks and it's like always... Can you turn invisible, Jot? Can you turn invisible, Jot? Yes, I can turn invisible. Yes. Watch. Boof. I'm gone. It appears a couple feet away. Look, I'm back. All right. <clears throat> You're kind of quiet there, Zazriel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> A woman, a, wo a, a woman, a few words. What day is it? Uh, the date was? Yeah. Uh, I'll ask Elle if she knows or uh, Balian. Yeah, you guys should mm -hmm. know. I'd know. Yeah. Um, okay. okay. I'm trying. I was guessing maybe Billy didn't know, so that's why I didn't ask you, Billy. Hmm. <laughs> I'm trying to remember the date for you guys been so long uh, but I want to say it's probably about the 16th of the harvest sounds about right I think 16th day of harvest Thanks. sounds like the first of thunder yeah that is the mighty thunderous roar up above uh, so you guys won't have any issues uh, making past uh, Oakhurst, uh, skirting around that, as well as uh, uh, skirting around uh, Baker's View. I mean, you guys have to kind of use the road. You do have a wagon, uh, and it'll, the road will lead right into um, into uh, this town of Blazendale. And so as you guys are going further north, uh, past once you get past um baker's view which is mountains as well um but now you become more into a uh, pine 
the the trees are uh, you have a lot of pine trees growing alongside the roads uh, there's mountains you're definitely on a mountain pass uh, going here to uh, uh, Blazingdale uh, you guys will uh, uh, come up into uh, when you see this uh, town here uh, it actually sits down into a valley uh, below in the mountains um, and there's a there's a few buildings uh, uh, that uh, are a little larger here. There is a uh, uh, what you believe is probably maybe a, a small uh, courthouse. Uh, as you guys are approaching, there is also uh, when you uh, arrive into the town, you will see a uh, tavern uh, called the Griffin's Nest. And, uh, yep. and also there is a, um, a, a, a shop, uh, called, uh, Tom Superior Outfitting and Dry Goods. And then there's several homes, of course, in this area. Um, there's, uh, the population, uh, seems here, um, probably um, ma majority of human however um, not not as much as uh, as you would think not they're not like overpopulated but they, there's you know about uh, maybe uh, may maybe two-thirds of the population is human maybe less than that uh, you see some halflings wandering around elves Dwarves, gnomes, um, uh, a couple, you know, some half elves, and even some half orcs in the population. Really? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, seem to be walking around. Uh, the half orcs, quite a few of them are dressed in a uh, 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 breastplate and have long swords. Uh, they also have a, a symbol on their armor of a, it's just a, almost a, a, just a metal circle with another circle within the center of it, and then just some carvings within the, uh, the metal. And their, their armor looks very nice, and, uh, and they, they, you think that the half-orcs might be uh, the town guard. Or at least make up the majority of it. So, what do you guys do? You're in this town. Wait, Jazz. What's our goal? What are we doing here? So, Valiant will state, well, we are supposed to, if we want, talk to this constable here. This constable, uh, Adara Whitewood and talk to her more about the orcs as well as uh, as uh, stone tooth she might be able to give us a little bit better insight for that Zaz uh, yeah we can go do that I just I can't right now I'm too drugged up <laughs> 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 Am I? I'm probably not going to do much talking in that. Yeah, Dar, since you wanted to go save your dwarves so much and do this for the dwarf population, why don't you show us your leadership abilities and find our destination? I don't know how to find a destination. I'm here for the ale. Alright, well, Valiant will, Valiant will say to you, Dar, remember? We're doing this for the dwarves, not the ale, right? Well, yeah, but okay. So, so Valley will say, so maybe you should seek out this constable, talk to her, and then we we'll go from there. And while this is up, <laughs> well, I think you're probably gonna have to ask some people. <laughs> ask. Hey, ask them. Where's your constable? Oh boy. While this is happening... Alright, the person just ig ignores you and keeps walking. Excuse me, excuse me, where is the constable at? Um, I know, we'll go to the tavern and find out where the constable's at. Yeah, I'll always talk to a bartender, they know everything. Alright. Um, 
so while this is happening. So I'm you're going to head to the tavern. All right. Yep. I'm going to just look for magic vendors to just browse around. I'm going to just look. All right. Go ahead and make an investigation. Natty 20. Natty 20. Nope. I don't see anything. All right. So you're wandering. <laughs> so Sassy is going to go wander around for an hour. All right. So uh, Dar and uh, I guess Valian will go with. Anybody else going to... Uh, this tavern with Dar. Sazriel. No, I'm not going with Dar. Kit. Erebus. I'll actually watch. Actually, I'll, I probably can't leave the way. Oh, yeah, you probably got yeah, I'll watch right. over. <laughs> I'll watch over Kat and see what she does. And whatnot. Observing. A black dragon. Dragonborn. Okay. All right, so you're hanging out with her. I'm not hanging out. I'm watching. Watching not, it? I'm not hanging out with her. Okay. No. Really? Yeah, the angel's gonna hang out with the black dragon boy. <laughs> yeah. So, are you hiding in that wagon too? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm perfect. Jot's like, Jot. yes. Can, can you, uh, do you wanna go with, uh, Dar? Yeah, I'll go invisible though, because they probably run for me and fear too. Everybody's yeah. everybody's afraid of this group. I wonder why. You got a white dragon, a black dragon. You got a angel that just tries not to be an angel. Oh, did you know I knew you were an angel? Huh? I bet you didn't, did you? Ah, I know you're an angel. You can hide your wings, but I know. I see the little aura. If you value your life, <laughs> if you value your life, you'll never speak on that again. Or else your life will be ended faster than you can say yes. Okay. Just, just, can I say one last thing? No. I told Erebus. I don't care. Erebus. You don't care? Nope. Whatever you guys talk to, you between you and Erebus is your business. It was about you? I don't care. You don't care? Nope. Okay. All right. Erebus, he keep, does, keep, she doesn't keep care. Keep your insults to yourself and <laughs> talk to the other group members, but... If you value your life, you will not get on bad terms with me. Do you, do you breathe something out your ass? No. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing out of my ass. I just kidding. I can slit your throat in a matter of seconds. I I'm sure. I'm sure you could. Can you go? Can you go spy? Can you go spy on the dark army? Oh, I, I'm Dar? Yeah, I'll be invisible with that. This should be entertaining, boy. I'll, I'll listen and pay attention, and I'll bring back whatever whatever he finds out. and let, I'll let you know, because whatever is going to come out of that fool's butthole, we just don't know. So, I, 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 I got it. I'm starting to understand I'm the brains of this operation. <laughs> hey. Feel, feel free. You can pee on Dar whenever you need to. Uh, I don't want to get hit by Green him. Adam I think, for I think he he hit Just... me harder than than Sasku, to be honest. Um, I didn't even want to so. hit him. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. You're off looking for a magic shop that doesn't exist. All right. So, <laughs> yeah. So, J Jot will disappear and uh, follow Dar. And then Valian will go with, uh, with Dar as well. So... All right, so you uh, you go into uh, the Griffin's Nest and Tavern, and uh, it, right now, it's, you know, you guys arrive uh, early during the day here, and uh, and, and uh, so it's not uh, not that busy here. Uh, you do see a uh, female behind a bartender. Uh, she looks uh, uh, Elvin. Uh, but it does have some human features where she's a little taller and then Elle's a little uh, more built um, in, uh, in, in height as well as weight. Uh, she has uh, red hair and uh, is wearing uh, uh, glasses. She has her long ha red hair kind of up in a big ponytail in the back, uh, wearing uh, you know a white skirt with a uh, red vest, kind of like what... Uh, 
uh, your dungeon master here is wearing sort of. <laughs> so, all right. Yep, she's behind the bar, kind of cleaning out some glasses, um, or some mugs. Don't say anything stupid. <laughs> you just hear that right from behind you. <laughs> Yes. Do you perchance have ale? Oh, of course we have ale, my friend. She'll uh, she'll uh, pour a glass out of a keg and uh, hand or a mug and hands it over to you. This will be uh, one copper piece, please. Oh, uh, Constable uh, Dara? That's the name, I think. Uh, she is probably in the, um, in, in, in our town hall, which is just down the street. It's a larger... I'm sorry, what was that? Does she ever come here? Uh, yes, she does. Uh, no, not every day. I mean, well, she would, some seats, uh, will come in here once in a while for, like, lunch or dinner. Um, but she's pr pretty serious about, uh, her job, so she doesn't, uh, really drink much. Oh, so you don't expect her here today? I, uh, probably not. It's, I, I cannot, there's no, uh, time time clock on her knowing when she's coming in here. Like some of my regulars, I know when they're coming in every time at the same time or certain days of the week. Her, there's... No, I would just go, you could go to the town hall and, and speak with her there. I'm sure she's there right now. She's very dedicated to her job. Well, thank you. All right. So you drink your ale up. Oh yeah. One swallow. You just chug, 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 chug. It's all gone. Puts it down in there. And then he turns around and heads to the door. All right. Which way down the street is that place you said the? Town hall. She just points to. Points to the right, just right down the street. You can't miss it. It's a very large building, and uh, it has a bell tower. They don't have any beer there, do they? Uh, no, they don't. You know what? Can I get one more for the road? I've got my own cup. Can you just fill that up for me? Be sure, she does. And she goes ahead and fills it up for you. Here you go, kind sir. Thank you. And he tosses her another gold piece. All right. Hey, Dim, yeah. hey, hey, Dim Spittle, you can't be drunk talking to the constable here. Are you going to remember anything? Get out of my ear, man. Take some sip and heads out the door and starts turning to the left, looks for me to, uh... To the oh, right, yeah. to, the right. To, the right. to the right, you moron. Man. All right. Uh, so yeah, so you'll go into uh, into this uh, rather large uh, building, uh, wooden building uh, with blue. Uh, it's, you know, actually, this is probably the nicest building in the town, uh, with actually even a blue paint job on on the on the building. The wood here has been painted up, and you go in and uh, uh, right away in there is a large room and there is a desk. Behind the desk is this uh, woman uh, wearing, a, uh, looks like she's wearing scale mail or a version of a scale mail. And uh, she's a female human. She's probably about uh, 
5'10", with uh, long brown hair, uh, young in the sense for uh, um, for humans, in a sense for you. So she's probably, uh, for human years, she's probably in her early 20s. And uh, she'll uh, s stand up, and she has a long sword on her side. She's wearing a, a brown, a brown uh, riding boots, as well as uh, she's kind of adorned uh, with the scale mail, has some brown uh, robes kind of around, uh, around her armor, as well as uh, her belt uh, seems to have some gold. She has like a gold, uh, gold belt on as well. She says, uh, may I help you, uh, stranger? As he comes in the door, he drains the last of his luck, puts it back on his, on his skin, wipes his face off in case there's any foam in his beard, and says, Good day, child! Would you do me the honor of going and fetching the constable for me? I am the constable. My name oh. is Dara Whitewood. I don't know if age has anything to do with it. Barely out of your mother's house, you look like. I've been out of my mother's house for quite some time, thank you. Well, then you must be accomplished if they made you a constable already at such a young age. I bet you're going to be a good one day. You must be very smart in the day. Well, thanks. I, I try to keep my wits about me. It's kept me alive this long in this in this rugged terrain. He's staring directly at her breastplate, by the way, instead of at her face. Yeah, she definitely has her her uh, armor does come down, so she does have some cleavage showing. So yeah, yeah you probably his eyes, are, his eyes are focused on that for the moment. <laughs> uh, well, once again, how can also four feet tall? So. Yeah, <laughs> you're yeah. probably staring right at him. Yeah. <laughs> So once again, once again, stranger, how can I help you? Uh, I was told that uh, we could find some work here. Some work? Yeah. We were uh, asked to, to come and explore and map out and perhaps take care of some work problems you might be having in a, in a certain uh, uh, dwarven uh, fortress slash forge. Oh, so you're talking yeah. a they're talking a stone tooth. I, I think that's the name. Oh yeah, the the the, the forge used to be called Krumdukar. Yes, yes, yes. Krum King. Yeah, that's what it was. Huh. Uh, but we don't know how to get there, and I was told that if you uh you might be having some problems with sports or something, maybe uh there might be a job for well, we don't necessarily have a job. Uh, however, we do uh, we do pay anybody, any uh, hunters or anybody that runs across the orc. Uh, we pay twenty five gold pieces per right hand of any orc that is brought to us. Twenty five gold pieces for the right hand of any. You know, I remember the tunnels when we would have those damn gophers we would dig down into. The I don't think they're, I think they're a lot worse than gophers. They're orcs, how bad could they be? Come on, I'm a dwarf. Well, they're very troublesome. I'm, I'm getting feedback from one of you guys. If you have it on Twitch. Okay, just yeah. All right. <laughs> so, perfect. To get oh to get to Crumb Car? Yeah, Crumb Cake. It's not Crumb Cake. It's Crumb Car. You're a, you're. A, this this I mean, I don't know what to say other than you're a, you haven't given me your name, so I'm just gonna say it because I know it's an insult and I don't like saying this, but you're a dwarf, and you should know. Uh, 
how to say crumb guitar. Well, then why are you calling it crumb cake? Crumb guitar. See, I can say it. Okay, all right. I'm just wondering. I'm going to name's Dar. Okay, Dar. Nice to meet you, Dar. I am I am Dara Whitewood. <laughs> so uh, I have some friends that are with me and our biggest problem is how do we get to the fort? We don't know where it is. And I was told that the trail is all but gone. Well, we actually have a uh, an orc prisoner right now that uh, uh, she's she's from or well she is was you know at least up there where these uh, orcs are operating out of st uh, stone tooth the path is is hidden I mean you but you could maybe take her with you and uh, if your group can control her and take her with you and make her maybe force her to show you the path uh, if not what you can do is really once you uh, head uh, north uh, east out of the town here uh, you'll be able to see uh, stone tooth from quite quite a distance you just get past the uh, next mountain here and on the other side uh, you'll see you'll see it there used to be a path a road that led down but that road has been washed away um, but there is there's definitely a path further up um, up, but I you have to you know find find the road in the woods but she might she might take you to it uh, you might have to force her or bribe her I'm not sure what you're gonna want to do with her but we actually do have an orc uh, she's a female uh, prisoner that we actually have here locked up right now I'm not sure. Do you have somebody in your group that could charm her and maybe get that information from her, or charm her and have her? Yes. Mm -hmm. Kill as many as we want, you don't care. Kill as many orcs as you want. Beautiful. I was a bounty hunter before, and I guess this is a bounty So, I'll have a straight number here. All right. Thank you very kindly for your, for, your, uh, for your information. We'll be seeing you soon, hopefully with many, many orcs. Like I said, yes, if you, if you want... And you have the ability to charm, charm this orc. If someone in your group has that ability to charm this orc and make them lead you up um, to the the mountain, uh, that will be perfect. Or like I said, once you travel an hour northeast, uh, you should see the mountain. It's hard to miss. Okay. It sticks uh, out. I'll have to check with the rest of my group and see if anybody can do that. If so, we'll be back. Okay, just let me know if there's anything else you need. And uh, good luck yeah. on... Uh, Constable Idara or just Constable Dara? Constable Dara or Constable Whitewood, whichever you're comfortable with. Constable, Constable, Constable Dara Whitewood. Uh, from uh, another room comes in this... Uh, this large uh, uh, six foot four um, looks like an orc uh, with uh, gray grayish hair slicked back um, but his skin is uh, paler than orcs that you 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 know you have seen in your your brief uh, you know that you're what have you seen of orcs um, and he has uh, one uh, white small husk sticking out. He's wearing a uh, breastplate 
and uh, has a long sword at his side and has these uh, gauntlets on as well and uh, is wearing uh, brown, uh, uh, it looks like brown scale pants and he kind of steps on into the room and says, Constable, just kind of nods his, nods his head at the constable and, uh, and nods at you and kind of just walks out the front door. What's that? He's still got his right hand. Oh, he's that he's not a he's he's uh he's half orc. He's not full orc. So half of him? He has both hands. He is my captain of my watch. Oh, okay. So he's not he's not one that we should be trying to mess with. Don't mess with any of the orcs here in the town. Please. They're half orcs. And uh they uh they are actually all the um, the town guard here. Half orcs protecting dwarves and elves and humans and halflings from orcs. Amazingly they are great warriors. Is that kinda of like isn't that kinda of like the chicken or the, the fox watching the hen house? Not in this case. These uh these are all they're all the civilized half orcs. They've all they're, they've all been born from, you know, raids because of orcs coming down here. Well, you also never saw a young constable like myself either, right? I guess I've got a lot to learn. Yes, I guess so, my friend. a rumor of a, a black dragon living beneath this old fortress named Nightscale but uh, that dragon hasn't been seen in, in a long time so I, I don't really know if it lives there or not or if the orcs have chased it off the, the, the fort has been occupied by orcs a, a few times now as well as goblins have occupied it, and uh, some hobgoblins had control of it once, some gnolls had control of it, and now we seem to have orcs. So it's always back and forth uh, with the monstrous humanoid races. Uh, they seem to fight over this uh, fortress a great deal. How old is this dragon? I mean, is it a big one? I. I mean I, all I know is it's just a rumor. I haven't seen this dragon. It's been, well, been does the rumor have it as being big enough to ride, or is it like the ones that I've met that are like three feet tall? Well, I don't know what dragons you have met. I've never met a dragon myself. Um, but, I mean, this, this story is older than I am. And so, I don't know. The dragon's got to be at least... 25 to 50 years old, if not older. I don't know. Like I said, it's it's more of a rumor. It's more of a story that this dragon night scale is living beneath the the forge. But I haven't seen this dragon. Better to be prepared for nothing than to be unprepared for everything. So, with that, I will say goodbye then, and I will uh, leave you back to my friends. Okay. And Alright, nice to meet you, Dar. Pleasure to meet you as well. Uh, Buzzy Boy, you still floating around here? <laughs> do, do, do you leave uh, the town hall? I'm just about to. I'm trying to find my friend here. Sorry. Oh, I'm trying to see. Sorry. This is Bilbo talking to... Uh, 
Avatar, not her. <laughs> he doesn't. You don't hear. You don't. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You don't hear nothing yet. So when you go out, did you, did your parents just beat you with the stupid rock all the time? Huh? What? Did your parents beat you with the stupid I rock know. all the time? I'm not. I'm not going to announce my. I'm not gonna announce myself to these people. She had, a, she had, she looked like you know a, a warrior, and all of a sudden, next thing you know, a blade slicing a down on me. Hey. I don't even know what you sleep with, whatever this gopher thing is, but I don't want to know about it, okay? I do not sleep with gophers. That's my cousin Freddy. Okay. All right. I think I think we need to go to talk to Erebus and let him know what's going on. Talk to the rest of the group. Oh my goodness. Okay, well you go get a beer and I'm gonna go back and talk to Erebus and Zazriel and L. So I'm gonna walk over to the tavern. Okay. I'm gonna walk in, I'm gonna go up to the bartender, I'm gonna ask for one beer to go again. Okay. Are you can you give me a She'll fill it? She'll, yeah, she'll give you a big, uh, big uh, liter mug. Uh, hey Amen. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> anytime. Yep. Piece Thank you very much. Yes. Anytime. Come back anytime you want. Well, thank you, young lady. And he uh, takes his beer and he heads out the door and he has to go find her. All right. All right. She, he's like, all right. So, are you done? Are you done? Well, you are still here. Yeah, I, I figure I shouldn't leave you. You know, you might fall down and uh, and uh, actually hit a, 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 something that make you smarter. <laughs> well, it certainly wouldn't be you, I guess. He takes a drink of beer and we head there. <laughs> All right. All right, so you head back to Erebus and the, and the group here. So the, so the dark creatures hiding in yes, the wagon. Yes, all the dark creatures hiding. Everybody else is at the wagon. Yep. Oh, hey, wagon! You guys yeah. awake? <laughs> I can't This buffoon's just been drinking on the job. <laughs> I have been working, I will have you know. You were dead. You don't sit there flying around and when I ask for you to ask me a question, you don't answer. And then when, as soon as we step out of the way, you start talking crap again. I tell you, worthless, you're the one who's worthless. I at least got some information. I think we know how we got planted in the dirt now. <laughs> Uh, well, she's kind of young. She's only like in her 20s. But, uh, anyways, 
Okay, get to get to the point, Dar. Get to the point, my goodness. <laughs> so jealous of the shit that comes out of your mouth. Sas Sasku. Mm -hmm. can, you, can you go with Dara and get the prisoner? Oh, boy. Uh, why don't we just travel? I don't want to convince an orc. I'm I might as well kill Sasku. my kill myself combining these two guys, their IQ together. Um, I'm actually like three times as smart as this dude. Zazriel's passed out. <laughs> what? Bailey, Bailey, Bailey and Al, can you go with, and all four of you go get the prisoner? <laughs> yeah, they. It, did, er, did Erky come with us, Bill? No, no. Erky actually stayed back at Oakhurst. Alright, that's a bummer. Alright, so we're all gonna head back. And go get the prisoner. Uh, yeah. So, El, Valley, and Sasku, uh, you guys will all go gather the prisoner. Um, we'll move the wagon, we'll move the wagon in front of that place. Okay, yeah. So, we're right there in case something happens. Right. So, when we get there and we walk in, Dar's going to be pushing his way to the lead to lead the way since he's the one that's been here before. And he kind of, you know. And, uh, he'll ask, he'll ask, Constable Dara, uh, is it possible that we could, uh, take your prisoner that you said, uh, as you said, and perhaps try and find a way up the, the mountain? Absolutely. So, Where's the prisoner? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll have him retrieve from our, uh, our cell here. I'll have her retrieve. So, she'll, okay. uh. She'll tell her sergeant, uh, this that half orc, um, to go go bring the prisoner up, and so. Do you have any, do you have any shackles that we could maybe keep upon her? Oh yeah, she's shackled. We'll return them to you uh, later, uh, the shackles, but we'd like to use them for now because I don't think I've got any. Energy. Absolutely. Yep. I nope. left them at home. No I problem. Friend, you know. Okay. So uh, they'll, uh, a couple of these half orcs, uh, they come up and uh, they bring this uh, female orc. Uh, she's just uh, uh, wearing, uh, well, wearing shackles, of course. And uh, she, uh, uh, she's just wearing uh, just a kind of brown, um, basically like a, almost like they put a, almost a, uh, a potato sack on her just cut open the arms you know and uh and, and a head thing and put her in uh kind of a just a potato sack to kind of uh just cover her features so um there she is so that's uh 
Um, she just you know, looks at you guys and uh, grunts. And Dar walks forward and says, that's a gorgeous grunt, you dusty lady. You. Uh, I heard you like quite the charms. She just, gla- I, she just glares at you. I've got a proposition for you, and I think you might like it. Uh, she's a little... Now she's, we're gonna, she's, all she's, right, I like trying. You said somebody should try and turn her. Oh, well, well, there's no accounting for taste. Let's just take her back with us and get out of here. All right. Grabs her by the shackles and starts walking her out. Okay. Yep, so they'll, uh, they'll, uh, you know, she'll, uh, they'll hand the chains over to you, Dar. Um, like I said, she's in shackles. So, all right. While we're walking back, I'll be like, my legs are short and stubby anyway, so she can keep up with me. All right. So, all right. She's with you guys. And while we're traveling back, I'll Wait. say to it an orc. Okay. Um, I speak your language. It is quite interesting. What's interesting about it? Mm-hmm. Different from all the others. It's superior than yours. Well, technically horrible compared to this, and they'll speak. And he'll be like, he'll whisper something in abyssal, so he'll, she'll fit, she'll hear like this weird language. All right. Okay, so is she in the back with us? Uh, if you guys want to put her in the back with you guys. Yeah, we, we sure, we'll put her in the back and okay. then I'm going to ask her and say, try to sweet talk her with that foreign language here, it's ain't going to work, buddy, trust me. I wasn't sweet talking. You speak, speak the common language? Dar's, Dar's already claimed dibs on her. No. John says. I'm not claiming dibs on anything. Gee, get it right. I was just trying to charm her like the, like the constable said. Can't charm. You, you speak the common language? Uh, she, she uh, grunts at you and goes, yes. What's your name? Yerzel. Bless you. Yerzel. Bless you. My name is Yerzel. Is that it right, Yerzel? Sounds like it. Yerzel. I understand your your small small little body's frame. And uh, how'd you get how'd you get captured? Now, as part of a s- small raiding party, and uh, uh, some dwarves got the best of us. I got captured. <laughs> So he'll, he'll say, look around you. He's the black dragon. I'll, yeah. I'll take my... Uh, I'll White take my, dragon. <laughs> black dragon born. <laughs> White dragon. I'll, I'll pull my mask back. You're from underground. Yeah. I'm not. What can I... What, what, what do you want? Are you guys setting me free? What kind of ruse is this? Have I seen without your mask before? I'm right there too. I don't think you're in the back with me. I am though. I'm right there. <laughs> you're drunk you're drunk already, just forget what you're seeing. <laughs> am I in the right group? I got a white dragon, I got a black dragon. <laughs> well I don't forget it. She, she has a name, Dar. Man, I tell you, if I want to know about mistakes, I should ask your parents, shouldn't I? What's it worth to you? We'll let you go. What am I 
You let me go? Sure. What did you say, Katrina? Uh, mm-hmm. I I don't I don't know about that. Um but I know how I was, so I if I lead you if I lead you to the the pass, you let me go. Sure. Okay. Deal. And I see uh Eric like as a draw. Yeah. That strike you a little funny that it's a little too easy. Oh well, my No, she was going to be killed otherwise. It's an easy decision. Yeah. Dwarf. Simple. I I, I lead I lead you to a path. You can go fight fight the orcs up there. I go I go I'll go home. Isn't home up there? No, that's not my home. Oh. But you can show us how to get there. Yes. I can show you the path to the there. Mm-hmm. When she's saying this, can I make a, uh, what she's trying to check? I want to see if she's, I think she's telling us this is the truth. Is that a perception check? Or is In, that a, insight. Insight. Insight? Mm-hmm. Okay. I want to make an insight roll. 19 on the dice plus 1 is 20. Uh, yeah, perfect. Nice roll. So, yeah, um, she definitely seems to be telling the truth that uh, she feels, you get the feeling that if she helps you uh, get to the past, that she she feels pretty comfortable looking at these people in the group that you let her go. She doesn't seem to have, doesn't seem like she has loyalty who's ever up on up on top of the, 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 the mountain. I believe her. Is she wearing shoes even, Bill? No, she's barefoot. She's in a gunny sack. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, she's wearing a gunny sack right now. We got any clothes? We got any clothes we can give her? That ain't very pretty. They, they, they took all my stuff. Sizing her up and down to see if you can figure out about how big she is. You, you got, Erzil, do you have more information? Uh, I mean, I can tell you they have some guards up top, um, up top the mountain. How about how many orcs are there up there? There's a couple dozen. Anything else besides orcs? Uh, they're led by an ogre named Ulf. Brazil, you're... Go ahead, Kev. Oh, beautiful. Did you hear that? Bill? What? No, I'm sorry. I have a set of clothing that I can give to her. Okay. If she gives us everything she knows, why don't we get her some equipment? Shoes. Short sword. Good. She may know more. Agree. Still think I would have liked to turn her. You just did. Just did it the right way. I'll be right back, guys. I'll be off offer. Okay. So led by an ogre, you said? Yes, his name is Ulf. Up there. Um, are there any hidden ways to get into the fortress that aren't like the front door? Not that I know of. What else can you tell us about, about it? Have you ever seen the front door? Yes. There's there's a gate on the door. Um, it's a big iron do- door. It's made by dwarves hundreds of years ago. It's a 
Dwarven Fortress. I haven't really been inside, but I've I've been up top of the mountain, and that the, there's doors at the top of the mountain. But it goes right directly into the mountain. Yes. Okay. What else can you tell us about the about this place? Uh. uh we've we've our, our tribe now has uh, held it for um, the last six months. Before that, before that, some gnolls had it. Um, Grandpa. Are you still trying to take it back, or is he? We we killed the gnolls. Oh, okay, okay. Our character are like ogres, kind of related to giants a little, like. Oh, uh, they're not related. They're big, like giants, hill giants. They're not related though. A cross between an ogre and a giant, really. Okay. Yeah, a cross, a cross between like an ogre or an orc and a hill giant. That's kind of, but they're the, their own creature. If it's a hill giant, it's mine. Like, oh that thing is going to be gone in seconds. I'm trying to think, is there anybody else going to be in these? Can you have any ideas? Can you have anything you want to ask? No? Alright, I'm back. Sorry. Someone wrote down what you told us? The only thing she's told us so far is that the, uh, the, the ogre's name is Alpha me, and that there's an eye of Roche as well up there at least. Uh, her tribe has owned it. For, yeah, her tribe has owned it for has owned the castle or taken the castle from some gnolls and they killed all the gnolls here uh, a while back and now they've been in charge of it for a while. It's still cool. We've got a gated dwarven iron door that still stands in front of the, the front of the mountain that, that blocks it. Is there any way? Is there any way in that goes underneath or around the gate? Not that. Not that she knew. And those are, it's her tribe that occupies it now? Yeah. But she doesn't go up there, she's from the village. I see, I see. That's good. That's good. What, uh, will your, uh, will the leader there negotiate? And I haven't asked. I've gotten used to negotiating ogres and orcs. I'm asking her, JD. She, yeah, she says, I don't know to negotiate what. What's his demeanor? He is usually uh, one of those fight first, ask questions later. Alright, that's what I would expect. So he really is demeanor. <laughs> you, you might have already asked this, but uh, any beasts? Uh, Ulf has, <laughs> yeah, Ulf has a couple of wolves, pet wolves of his. Trains? Yes. Do they patrol with them, or does he keep them near, near him? He doesn't. Nest, he doesn't go out with patrols. They're with the wolves. Are with him. They're. They're. He has two of them. They're his pet wolves. Um, he doesn't go out on patrols though. He stays up there. He commands from there. He sends patrols. Patrols out from there. Any other creatures used on patrols? Anything that can use their nose to smell people or? No, we just have, our tribe, do we just have orcs and some wolves? Our tribe has more wolves, but not there. The Alf has two wolves, two large, two large wolves. They're not wargs, though, just two big, big wolves. Do you know the name of the Eye of Rush? No, I don't talk to them. Don't try. You uh, you don't talk to Ira Grumpsh unless Ira Grumpsh talks to you. Uh, I don't know. I can't think of anything else on him. We'll be traveling with her for a little bit. How long to the trail? Uh, she says it just takes a couple hours. Short. No, it's it is short, but you won't be able to take this wagon. She says. No, uh, where will we need to abandon that? Here. So we should buy horses now, or whatever we need. 
Can the horses do the whole trail? Yes, horses can do the whole trail. Horses? You can get a mule if you want, then. No, you probably can't climb on a horse. Jot, Jot, you're rubbing off on me, man. <laughs> <laughs> Um, how fast do ho- would horses go in this terrain? Would I know? Like... Not quite big enough. Because I might be able to go as fast as a horse. Did you say you can say change into a wolf? She'll, she'll, she'll uh, tell you by foot it'll take probably about uh, um, about uh, two days to uh, travel up the, the mountain and the whole time. But with horses? How long would it take with horses? With horses. Because it is rough to ride. With horses, you can probably do it in a day. So they can't. Once they're once you're on the on the mountain, there's there's no way to run around. There's only one. There's only one pathway up and down. Orcs orcs can't get by you. You can't get by orcs without seeing each other on on the road that that's further up the mountain. So it doesn't matter if we are walking or on foot. Well, once you get to the road, yes. Not not the not the majority of the trip. Majority of the trip, you'll be in the woods. But then, once you get to the mountain, that's that's where uh, it doesn't matter. All right. Either way, Zafku. Hmm. What do you think? Want to go fast or slow? Um, fast. Our group has grown a lot since our last encounter. Wait, do we have an encounter when we were traveling to the place? Huh? When we were traveling to the Sun Citadel, did we have an encounter? No. Oh. Yeah, then, just horses. Maybe we'll luck out again. Guitar, what do you think? She can turn into a wolf, so she doesn't have to uh, be able to ride a horse, right? Right. The loping, the running speed of a wolf is about the same as a horse cow. How fast is the speed of a horse? Out of out of the out of a uh, hit the air. I don't I don't need a horse. I'm good. I, I I'm good. I don't need one. Um, just just so you know, yeah. I don't think Calcrix needs one either. So that's. Two horses you don't need. Um. So we have a wagon, which means we have two horses, or is Lucky pulling this thing? I believe uh, you have two horses plus Lucky. Perfect. So, um. Let's get four or five more. What's the speed of a horse? I'll take a pony. You go buy one. Look it up in Player's Handbook, buddy. Uh, <laughs> so where, what section is it in? Uh, with equipment. Oh. All right, Bailey and Elle, can you guys go buy what we need? Yeah, so they'll be able to uh, uh, go uh, be able to purchase horses for the group and, you know, all, all that gear. And a pony. Well, why don't you just... Wait, uh, I might not need... Well, um, sh- Valiant will go, why don't you just ride uh, Lucky, Dar? Uh, it sounds perfect. I'll ride Lucky. 
So yeah, so you'll just need a couple horses because you already have two. So you just need what? One, two more, I think, right? One, two, well, three. Well, sprinting, I could keep up with you guys. Yeah, so two more horses. Or but three more I horses. might. There's eight of us total. If, Thorne and Bailey if I sprint, I'll be able to keep up with them. Yeah, oh, that's true. Thorne and we've got too. three, so we need five more, I think. Yeah. Well. Give us an, give us an extra to beat Calpers, too. <laughs> Just in case. Calpers can keep our food from rotting, too. That's kind of cool. <laughs> Well, that's to ask him. Don't wait until you ask him that one. You want well, me to ask. Yeah. If I sprint, I can be as fast as the horse. All right. So yeah, you guys will be able to uh, uh, purchase horses. Um, okay. That's not a problem here. So I'll just uh, I'll I'll have you guys deduct gold off we'll, off session. We'll tell L to do that. Yeah, L will figure that all out. So or or I will. Perfect. So, all right. So do you guys, uh, I'm assuming you're probably going to at least take the wagon a little bit out of. Uh, I was just going to say that, yeah. We'll switch the individual horses once we're out of sight. We'll tuck the wagon away somewhere. Maybe it'll be the one we're back. Maybe not. Okay. So perfect. Yep. While you guys are all getting on your horses, I'm going to go get lucky. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so yeah, so you guys will be able to get on horses. Um, we so, will get one for you, uh, Katari, so if you want it, but otherwise it'll just be extra. I have my will ask if you can if you can talk to the horse. Um, I All right. We'll start chat All right, perfect. Uh, so yeah, so she's gonna go ahead, and also do you end up buying her gear oh, yeah. as well? I just want to just yeah, I figured you were, but so she'll definitely once you get her in like leather armor and some boots, um, she'll definitely be a, even a lot more pleasant too. Um, seems that you guys are on you know to your word. So, uh, yeah, so she'll lead you uh, uh, through the woods. Um, as you guys start, uh, you know, traveling through the, the woods and uh, actually, you know, past this first mountain, what uh, you're actually going to see off in the distance, high up uh, in these mountains, is this uh, mountaintop that... Uh, that you look at it and uh, it almost, and it juts out because all around uh, the other mountains here in this area, uh, they're covered with pine trees. And so, if, you know, you really don't get much detail out of, out of these individual mountains, this, this hill, you know, this hilly area, mountainous area that you're traveling through right now. Um, but what you do notice, and this is like an hour after you, uh, you know, have uh, traveled via horse here, uh, jettison out of out of all these trees, you see this stone uh, just jetting up, and it looks almost like a a, a tooth, a pulled tooth, out of you know out of your mouth where it has a tip and everything. Um, and, uh, and she's, and you also see uh, ever so slightly, um, it looks like smoke coming out of, uh, out of the mountain. You can of course tell really right now where, where that smoke is coming from directly, but you do see, uh, it looks like a trail of black smoke coming, uh, coming from the mountain. And uh, uh, Urzel will say that, that there is Stone Tooth. So, uh, as uh, you guys uh, travel uh, um, 
probably about five hours. And uh, uh, she, she leads you through some brush and you get on to what, uh, what is a uh, kind of a road next, next to this, this mountain. Um, it's uh, once uh, this road looks like it was once, you know, probably a, a, a nice and with Dar here in the group. Uh, it looks like this mountain, this road was probably uh, at one time, you know, a couple hundred years ago. It's probably a, a fine, you know, fine dwarven made road. But as the years have gone and weather has, uh, has hit this road, um, the wear and tear and probably, you know, not being upkept by uh, any of these humanoids, uh, the road uh, just quite isn't what it probably once was uh, a couple hundred years ago. Uh, and uh, Urzal will say, "This is the this is the way up up the mountain." And uh, she will uh, she will say, "What it does is it leads back back and forth about three times up this path um, to get to the very top." But this uh, this path will take you directly up up the, the mountain top. Therabus will say thanks, and uh, he'll pick he'll pick her up, pick the locks on her shackles. Okay. How close can we get to the entrance before we're spotted by the uh, guards? That's a good question. Uh, you can get pretty close. I mean, if it's by day, um, you can probably get maybe, um. Maybe about a hundred, hundred and fifty. If you guys are quiet, she looks around. Is and the only person that's in any armor, I think, is is Azriel is in breastplate now. Yeah. Anybody else in heavy armor? Yeah. So she'll and go. You probably us. can get, you know, hundred, hundred and fifty feet, as long as that one doesn't make a lot of noise in the armor. Plus, I can cast. How about if we wait at night? No, at night you could probably, if you're quiet, you can probably get even closer. I, I mean, your horses might give you away, but if uh, um, with all of you here, you could probably get six. I mean, if you're stealthy and looks at the uh, at Erebus especially, you could. Who knows? You could maybe get thirty feet before they notice. Maybe even closer. I. I do know of your, you know, the stories of your kind where you sneak up on your enemies. Plus, I can cast a spell called. What's it called? I can cast. That's cool. Yeah? She's not really our ally. I know, I'm not saying this out loud. I'm just saying okay. it in my head. All right, let's see. Alright, so he'll take the locks, uh, take the shackles, put them on Lucky. Okay. And, uh,. Nod to her. Alright, thank you. Good luck. Good luck, be safe. I will. And yeah, she goes running off, the, you know, off to, uh, you know, Lucky. off to the um, south, uh, southwest of you guys. Cool. Um, I hate to say it, I'm already past two when I need it for my time. No, I think this is probably a good stopping point. Um, and uh, next week we'll have L back. We'll also have uh, Valian because this is his last week at Burger King. And <laughs> <A wife. laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Then he'll then he'll be coming back here uh, to the U to go back to starting school in the you know this fall semester. So you're gonna be here next Wednesday. When is it? You go up north, or, or I mean not up north, but up to Montana. Yes, so we will be playing uh, next Wednesday uh, for the Forge of Fury episode two, seven p.m. Central Time. So no no changes there. Uh, however, the Gray Guardians on our Saturday game uh, for the next two weeks uh, we will not be uh, 
airing uh, Why? airing the Grey Guardians. Uh, one because we have a family thing to go to on Saturday, and next Saturday I am taking my youngest daughter back to Montana for college. So. That is why. And see you guys tomorrow. So, uh, if you are watching this on YouTube, made it all the way to the end, uh, please subscribe. Uh, hit the like button. It does help. It helps viewership. We're a small channel trying to grow. Kat, thanks for joining. Welcome to our group. Uh, it, and, uh, and be ready for next week because we're in for a fight that's for sure well, unless uh, it gets <laughs> and we're not fighting uh kobold or goblins somebody's we're girlfriend <laughs> we're gonna be fighting just fighting some orcs so with that uh i am gonna go ahead and sign out here on our channel here uh remember it's cool to be a geek pass it on and happy gaming